Hi there, today I'm taking a break from Island Sanctuary to help those who tend to get a little lost when a new patch drops. I will talk about battle class stuff first and then crafters and gatherers at the end. The first thing most players do when a new patch drop is MSQ. This is a new story that just dropped and will give you a new dungeon and trial usually. We will talk about gearing near the end of the video if you are lacking in item levels. MSQ is usually the first thing most people prioritize. For good reason because the story is so good right now. This time around it took about 3 hours or so of straight playing to get through the MSQ that was just released. Once you are done with the MSQ the next thing you want to do is the new raid series. Now we get 4 new raids for the raid tier in Endwalker and you can unlock these at Labyrinthos. The raid story is top tier good with more explanations on Ossians and how they came to be so it's really worth it just for the story. The new raid tier is 585 item level so you want to gear up a bit if you do not meet the requirements. When doing the raid series it is usually best to prioritize the chest piece turn-ins or leg turn-ins as they have the best stat increases. It can get a little competitive since most are trying for those for savage preparation that starts a week after patch 6.2. If you're a casual player, I would not worry about it too much, but still shoot for those super sick glam options. The chess piece is the one that glows the most, and you may want to get that one or wait to get that one for this week. Eventually you'll get them, so you don't really have to stress out about it. You will want to do the raid series each week, especially the last one, number 8, as it will drop an unsung blade that you'll be able to turn in for an item level weapon in 7 weeks, so make sure not to miss a week. After doing the raid series, you can do a few different things. You can catch up on crafting and gathering. You can enter Island Sanctuary, to which I made a video for seven tips and tricks and have so many more coming out, which you can find in the Island Sanctuary playlist. This next thing is important on your weekly to-do list, which is to cap out your tombstones of casualty every week. You can get a max of 450 a week, and it's some of the best gear in the beginning of the patches. Another thing that players really like to go do is run the Alliance raid, since now all the loot restrictions have been lifted. You can grab 590 gear here as well as coins to upgrade your Radiant gear, which is Tombstones of Astronomy gear, to augmented 600 Radiant gear. But mostly people just run it for the glamour since they can run multiple times a week or even a day and get what they're looking for for all the different jobs, as the glamour was really on point for this alliance raid. So to recap, the main things for battle classes is to cap out on weekly Tombstones, do the raid series each week for turn-ins, and get the Unsung Sword, work towards 610 gear, and do other stuff in the game that you've been putting off like leveling other jobs, crafting and gathering, island sanctuary, etc, etc. You'll have to forgive my voice as I've been making videos non-stop these last three days. Let's talk about gearing because this is where a lot of newer or freshly 90 players get confused and there's a couple different routes you can take. You'll need an item level of 575 for the new dungeon, as well as an item level of 585 for the new trial. If you're lacking a few items, you can do a few things depending on what strikes your fancy. If you have Tombstones of Astronomy, you can purchase 590 Radiant gear. This will be more suitable than enough to bring you up those two item levels for the dungeon. The new dungeon will also drop 595 gear, so you can equip any of that if you get any drops from it. Most players at this point are working towards the new crafted battle gear, as I mentioned before, which is item level 610. To quickly get Tombstones of Astronomy, you can do the daily duty roulettes with your level 90 job and then that will net you quite a hefty amount for all the new gear and odds are though you probably have a good stack of them just from last patch. A note here is you can turn your old Tombstones of Aphorism in which you can do in Mordona at Oriana for Tombstones of Astronomy. If you want to double dip then you can run the new alliance raid for the 590 gear for your specific job for glamour and or equip since 590 will be more than enough to allow you to do the new dungeon and trial. If you were sporting any of the classical gear which is 580 you can turn those in for Hanish import certificates. You would then need to purchase crucible rain for 100 tombstones of astronomy each and you can turn both of those in for 590 augmented classical gear. Though I'd rather just get the astronomy gear if you're going to go through all the trouble. Make sure before you do this you calculate if you'll have enough for the new augmented gear. If you are a crafter or gatherer you'll want to get the master recipe books. There are 1200 white scripts each which you can get pretty easily by doing custom deliveries or collectible turn into the vendor. Usually the carpenter level 89 collectible is a good choice since it's just two ingredients instead of three like a lot of the other ones. For gear for crafters or gatherers you should have 590 armor and weapons with 560 accessories from last patch. If you don't then you'll want to work towards these by either crafting it yourself, purchasing them from the market board to catch up, and then melding them appropriately. If you have all of that and your folklore books which are for the legendary nodes which you can get by turn in gatherer white scripts for folklore tokens, you can start working on collecting current end game materials. If you want a video explaining more of the endgame crafting and gathering, then let me know down below. 
I like to use Garland Bell for tracking the alerts for legendary nodes. These materials just by themselves can sell for a lot, or you can craft them into the next step, like Bayberry into Bayberry Claw, and sell those for which sell for even more gil. Basically, all the endgame crafters and gatherers are gearing their own battle jobs with the new 610 gear, or selling it on the market board and making a ton of gil right now. Another thing you may want to start doing is stocking up on materia for crafters and gatherers. The spirit bond rate right now for gathering is insanely high for the legendary nodes. With a spirit bond potion, you're almost spirit bonding on every single node. You'll want to start stocking up for future melding so you don't have to buy them because they can be expensive and for selling during the patch days as you can really capitalize on patch day and I sold about 8 million gil worth of materia in about 30 minutes. Make sure you're doing your custom deliveries each week for the near free scripts is essential for building up your materia supply. To sum it all up, battle classes are wanting to do the raids and get 610 gear, crafters and gatherers are getting materials to sell and making the 610 gear and selling it on the market board, or you're doing both like me who just can't help but do one thing. Basically that's it, the next thing we're waiting for is a new criteria in variant dungeons as well as the tribal beast tribes that come out in 6.25, which is roughly a few weeks after this patch. I hope this video helped a little give direction to all the madness that is patch day. If you want to watch more Island Sanctuary, I mean Final Fantasy Guides and Tutorials, then you can click here.